Okay. Heart. The heart is a four-chambered pump. Uh, the heart is a four-chambered pump. The heart is a four-chambered pump. Two upper chambers of the heart called the atria. Two upper chambers of the heart are called the atria. The two upper chambers of the heart are called the atria. The two lower chambers of the heart are called the ventricle. The two lower chambers of the heart are called the ventricle. The two lower chambers of the heart are called the ventricle. The two upper chambers of the heart are called atria. The two lower chambers of the heart are called the ventricle. What... Uh, oh, the uh, valves that separate the atria and the ventricle is a septum. Valve that separates the atria and the ventricle is a septum. Valve that, that separates the atria and the ventricle is a septum. Uh, the right AV has three flaps and is called a tricuspid valve. The right AV has three flaps and is called the tricuspid valve. The right AV has three flaps and is called the tricuspid valve. The left AV has two flaps and is called the bicuspid mitral valve. The left AV has two flaps and is called the bicuspid mitral valve. The left AV has two flaps and is called the bicuspid mitral valve. The left AV has two flaps and is called the bicuspid mitral valve. Uh, Exiting the heart are the pulmonary trunk and, a, uh, and the aorta. Exiting the heart are the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Exiting the heart are the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Exiting the heart are the pulmonary 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 trunk and the aorta valve. Uh, valves between right and left ventricle are pulmonary trunk is called pulmonary semilunar valve. Valve between left ventricle and aorta is called aorta semilunar valve. Exiting the heart is pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Valve between the right ventricle and pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Valve between the left ventricle and the aorta is called the aorta semilunar valve. Exiting the heart is the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. The valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Valve between the left ventricle and the aorta is called the semilunar valve. Valve between the right ventricle and pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. The valve between the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary semilunar valve. Valve between left ventricle and the aorta is called the aortic semilinear valve. Pulmonary and systemic circulations. Pulmonary circulation, path of blood from right ventricle through the lungs and back to the heart. Pulmonary. Path of blood from the right ventricle through the lungs and back to the heart. Pulmonary. Path of blood from the right ventricle through the lungs and back to the heart. Pulmonary, path of blood from the right ventricle through the lungs and back to the heart. Systemic circulation, oxygen-rich blood pumped to all organ systems to supply nutrients. Systemic circulation, oxygen-rich blood pumped to all organ systems to supply rich nutrients. Systemic circulation, oxygen-rich blood pumped to all organ systems to supply nutrients. Systemic circulation, Oxygen-rich blood pumped to all organ systems to supply nutrients. Flow of blood. Superior inferior vena cava deliver blood to the right atrium. Through the tricuspid valve, right ventricle, out the right ventricle, through the pulmonary semilunar valve to the pulmonary valve branches to the right and left pulmonary arteries deoxygenated blood to the lungs, oxygenated back through the pulmonary veins, oxygenated blood to left atrium through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, out the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta, into the arterial system through the entire body. Blood flow. Superior inferior vena cava deliver blood 
to the right atrium through the tricuspid valve right atrium out the right ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valve pulmonary valve branches to right and left pulmonary arteries deoxygenated blood to the lungs oxygenated back through the pulmonary veins oxygenated blood to the left atrium through the mitral valve into the left ventricle out the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta into the atrial system through the entire body blood flow superior inferior vena cava delivered blood to the right atrium through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle out the ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar valves pulmonary valve branches to right and left pulmonary arteries deoxygenated blood to the lungs oxygenation back to back through the pulmonary veins from the lungs back to the back through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium through the mitral valve into the left ventricle out the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta into the atrial system through the entire body so the flow of blood through the heart goes from the right atrium to the uh, tricuspid valve into the right ventricle out the ventricle through the pulmonary semilunar pul pulmonary valve branches right and left pulmonary arteries deoxygenated blood to the lungs so from the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve to the lungs back through uh, pulmonary veins to the left atrium uh, from the left atrium through the mitral valve to the left ventricle out of the left ventricle to the aortic semilunar valve into the aorta i have to probably watch some more videos on that a uh, cardiac cycle repeating pattern of contraction and relaxation of the heart has two phases systole and distal systole contraction distal relaxation cardiac cycle the repeating pattern of contraction and relaxation of the heart has two phases systole and distal systole is contraction distal is relaxation cardiac cycle the repeating pattern of contraction of relaxation of the heart has two phases systole contraction and distal relaxation systole contraction distal relaxation steps of the cardiac cycle step one uh passive ventricular filling what is the name of the volume of of blood ventricles at the end of this uh, step in diastolic volume what is the ecg waves associated with the first step of the cardiac cycle is the p wave step two what is happening in the step atrial contraction and emptying what ecg waves are associated with this step uh, QRS is associated with step two and three. Step three of the cardiac cycle. What is happening in this step? Isovolumetic, isovolumic contraction. What is the name of the blood volume ejected in this, in this step? Stroke volume. What ECG waves are associated with this step? QRS. Step four. What is happening in this step? Ventricular contraction and ejection. Um, what is the name of the blood volume in the ventricles at the end of this step? End diastolic volume. What ECG waves are associated with this step? Step four of the cardiac cycle is um, ECG waves associated with that is the T wave. Step five of the cardiac cycle. Isovolumetric uh relaxation back pressure causes semilunar valves to close what happens next onset of filling back to stage one t wave uh back step one of the cardiac cycle
Uh, what is happening in this step? Passive ventricular filling. What is the name of the blood volume ventricles at the end of this step? Endostolic volume. What ECG wave is associated with this step? P wave. Step two. What is happening in this step? Atrial contraction and emptying. What ECG waves are associated with this step? QRS. Step three, ejection. What is happening in this step? Isovolumetric vol volumic contraction. What is the name of the blood volume ejection in this step? Stroke volume. What is the ECG valves are associated? What ECG valves are associated with this step? QRS. QRS is associated with step two and three. P wave is associated with the first step, the cardiac cycle, and T wave is associated with the fourth step. Fourth step of the cardiac cycle. Uh, what is happening in this step? Ventricular contraction and ejection. What is the name of the blood volume in ventricles at the end of this step? Endostolic volume. What is the ECG wave associated with this step? T wave. Isovolumetric relaxation. Step, or step five is also isovolumetric relaxation. Back pressure causes semilunar valves to close. What happens? Onset of filling back to stage one, T wave. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Steps of the cardiac cycle. Step one, what is happening in the step? Passive ventricular filling. What is the name of the blood volume in the step ventric at the in the ventricle at the end of this step, in the stolic volume. What ECG waves are associated with this step, P wave, step two of the cardiac cycle. What is happening in this step, atrial contraction and emptying. What ECG wave is associated with this step, QRS. Cardiac cycle, step three, ejection. What is happening in this step? Isovolumic contraction. What is the name of the blood volume in this step? Stroke volume. What ECG wave is associated with this step? QRS. Step four. What is happening in this step? Ventricular contraction and ejection. What is the name of the blood volume ventricles at the end of this step? Endostolic volume. What is the ECG waves that are associated with this step? T wave. Step five of the cardiac cycle, isovolumetric relaxation. Back, back pressure causes semilunar valves to close. What happens next? Onset of fillings. Back to stage one, T wave ECG. Heart sounds, closing of the AV and semilunar valves. Heart sounds, closing of the AV and semilunar valves. Heart sounds, closing of the AV and semilunar valves. Lub, first down, produced by the closing of the AV valves during isometric contraction. Dub, second sound, produced by the closing of the semilunar when pressure in the ventricles fall below pressure of the arteries. Heart sounds, closing of the AV and semilunar valves. Lub, first sound produced by closing of the AV valves during isometric contraction. Lub first down, produced by closing of the AV valves during isometric contraction. Dub second sound, produced by closing of the semilunar. When pressure in the ventricle falls below pressure in the arteries. Dub second sound, produced by closing of the semilunar. When pressure in the ventricles fall below pressure in the arteries, heart sounds closing the AV and semilunar valves. Lub first sound produced by the closing of the AV valve during isometric contraction. Dub second sound produced by the closing of the semilunar. When pressure in the ventricles fall below pressure in the arteries, aortic area, upper right side of the sternum, right atrium, 
aortic area, upper right side of the sternum, right atrium, aortic area, right atrium, aortic area, right atrium, pulmonary, upper left side of the sternum, left atrium, pul uh, pulmonic area, left atrium, pulmonic area, left atrium, pulmonic area, left atrium, pulmonic area, left atrium, tricuspid and bicuspid areas, right and left ventricles, 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 heart murmur, abnormal heart sounds produced by abnormal patterns of blood flow in the heart, Heart murmur, abnormal heart sounds produced by abnormal patterns of blood flow in the heart. Heart murmur, abnormal heart sounds produced by abnormal patterns of blood flow in the heart. Heart murmur, abnormal heart sounds produced by abnormal patterns of blood flow in the heart. Heart murmurs, different types of heart murmurs are uh, defective valves, mitral stenosis, incompetent valves, septal defects, Different types of heart murmurs are uh, defective heart valves, mitral stenosis, incompetent valves, septal defects. Four common types of heart murmurs are um, defective heart valves, mitral stenosis, incompetent valves, septal defects. Detef defective heart valves become damaged by antibodies made in response to an infection. Defective heart valves become damaged by antibodies made in response to an infection. Defective heart valves become damaged by antibodies made in response to an infection. Mitral stenosis. Mitral valves be become thickened and calcified. Impairs blood flow from left atrium to left ventricle. Mitral stenosis. Mitral valve becomes thickened and calcified impairs blood flow from left atrium to left ventricle, mitral stenosis, mitral valve becomes thickened and calcified, impairs blood flow from left atrium to left ventricle. Incompetent valves, uh, valves do not close properly. Uh, incompetent valves, most, most common of the four. Incompetent valves are the most common of the four. Incompetent valves, Valves do not close properly. Murmurs may produce as blood regurgitates through the valve flaps. Incompetent valves, most common of the four. Incompetent valves. Uh, valves do not close properly. Mur murmurs may be produced as blood regurgitates through the valve flaps. Incompetent valves. Valves do not close properly. Murmurs may be produced as blood regurgitates through the valve flaps. Septal defects, holes in the septum between right and left, uh, left and right sides of the heart. Blood passes from left to right. Septal defects, holes in the septum between left and right sides of the heart. Blood flip passes from left to right. Born with this, which makes it congenital. Septal defects, born with this, which makes it congenital. Septal defects, holes in the septum between the left and right sides of the heart, blood passes from left to right. Born with this, which makes it congenital. Septal defects, holes in the septum between left and right sides of the heart, blood passes from left to right. Born with this, which makes it congenital. Uh, <clears throat> electrical, electrical activity of the heart, auto, Automaticity, automaticity, dang, huh? Uh, what is it? Essay notes. Generated, uh, automaticity, essay notes. Generates electrical signal that causes, uh, upper heart chambers to contract. Um, what, uh, SA node generate, oh, all right, automaticity is the automatic nature of the heartbeat, SA node, what is it, generates electrical signals that cause upper heart chambers to contract, 
What does it do? Functions as a peacemaker. Pacemaker. Uh, essay notes. How does it depolarize? Uh, membranes. Uh, it, it depolarizes and releases calcium. Pacemaker potential. Describe. Slow, spontaneous depolarization. Stable. Uh, essay note. Stable resting membrane potential. Does not maintain stable resting membrane potential. SA nodes do not maintain stable resting membrane potential. SA nodes or uh, electrical activity of the heart. Automaticity is the automatic nature of the heartbeat. SA node, uh, what is it? Generates electrical signals that cause the upper heart chambers to contract. Uh, what does it do? Functions as a pacemaker. How does it depolarize it? It releases calcium. Uh, membrane depolarizes from negative 60 to negative 40 MV. Pacemaker potential. Spontaneous depolarization. St stable resting membrane potential? Question mark. SA nodes do not maintain a stable resting membrane potential. Uh, electrical activity of the heart. Automaticity. is the automatic nature of the heartbeat. Uh, SA nodes. Uh, what is an SA node? It generates electrical signal that causes the upper heart chambers to function, uh, to contract. Uh, what does it do? Contractions of the pacemaker. Functions as, uh, as a pacemaker. SA nodes functions as a pacemaker. How does it depolarize? It releases calcium to depolarize. Membrane depolarizes from negative 60 to negative 40 MV. Pacemaker potential. Uh, Slow spontaneous depolarization. S s SA nodes uh, do not maintain a stable resting membrane potential. SA nodes uh, membranes depolarize from negative 60 to negative 40 MV. And they depolarize with calcium. Uh, conducting tissues of the heart. SA node. AV node, bundle of his, right and left branches, per junkie fibers. Conducting tissues of the heart. SA node, AV node, bundle of his, right and left branches, uh, per junkie fibers. Conducting tissues of the heart. SA node, AV node, bundle of his, right and left branches, per junkie fibers. Describe the conduction pathway, nerve or muscle tissue specialization Specialized cells in the electrical signals that keep your heart beating. Uh, describe the conduction pathway. Nerve or muscle tissues specialized cells in the electrical signals that keep your heart beating. Describe the conduction pathway. Conducting tissues of the heart. Uh, nerve or muscle tissue specialized cells in the electrical signals that keep your heart beating. SA nodes, where are they located? At the junction of the crista terminalis, upper wall of the right atrium. SA node is located at the upper wall of the right atrium. SA node is located at the upper wall of the right atrium. SA node is located at the upper wall of the right atrium. <clears throat> AV node is located on the notch of the triangle near coronary sinus, the internal septum. AV node is located uh, in the internal septum. AV node is located on the internal septum. AV node is located on the internal septum. Bundle of his is located in the middle of the heart, deep within the dense connective tissue. Bundle of his is located in the middle of the heart, deep within the dense connective tissue. Bundle of his is located within the uh, dense uh, within the middle of the heart within dense connective tissue. Right and left bundle of branches uh, do what? They can right and left bundle branches conduct impulses to right and left ventricle. Right and left bundles bundle branches conduct impulses to right and left ventricle. Right and left bundle branches conduct impulses to right and left ventricle. Per junkie fibers electrical impulse do to the ventricular muscle and subendocrine. Perjunkie fibers, electrical 
impulse to the ventricular muscle in the subendocrine. Per junkie fibers, electrical impulses to the ventricular muscle in the subendocrine. Once the depolarization hits a cardiac muscle cell, it spreads through myocardial cells via gap junctions. Resting membrane potential is negative 90 mV. Once depolarization hits a cardiac muscle cell, it spreads through myocardial cells via gap junctions. Resting membrane potential is negative 90 mV of the SA node. Um, once depolarization hits cardiac muscle cell, it spreads through the myocardial cell via gap junction. Resting membrane potential is negative 90 mV of the SA known. Once depolarization of the cardiac muscle cell, it spreads through the myocardial cells via gap junctions. Resting membrane potential is negative 90 mV make a volt. <clears throat> Why does a uh, contraction pattern start at the bottom ventricle? I don't know. Uh, cardiac muscle action potential. Upon depolarization, rapid upshoot occurs equals voltage gated uh, sodium channels open inward diffusion of, of sodium. Cells become positive. Uh, plateau phase, rapid reversal in membrane polarity to negative 15 MV, voltage gated calcium channels open, slow inward flow of calcium, balances outflow of potassium and makes repolarization slow, voltage gated potassium are not yet open, rapid repolarization, voltage gated Potassium channels open, rapid outward diffusion of potassium. Cardiac muscle action potential. Upon depolarization, rapid upshoot occurs. Voltage-gated sodium channels open, inward diffusion of sodium. Cell voltage becomes positive. Plateau phase. Rapid reversal in membrane polarity to negative 15 MV. Voltage-gated calcium channels open, slow inward flow of calcium balances outflow of potassium and makes repolarization slow. Voltage-gated potassium channels are not yet open. Rapid repolarization. Voltage-gated potassium channels open. Rapid outward diffusion of potassium. Cardiac action muscle potential. Upon depolarization, rapid upshoot of voltage-gated sodium channels open, inward diffusion of sodium voltage-gated uh, voltage becomes positive. Plateau phase, rapid reversal in membrane polarity to negative 15 MV, voltage-gated calcium channels open, slow inward flow of calcium balances outflow of potassium and makes repolarization slow. Voltage-gated potassium channels are not yet open. Rapid repolarization. Voltage-gated potassium channels open. Rapid outward diffusion of potassium. Cardiac muscle action potential diagram. Refactory periods. Rapid upshoot plateau phase. Rapid repolarization. Refactory periods, rapid upshoot, plateau phase, rapid repolarization, refactory periods are rapid upshoot, plateau phase, and rapid repolarization. What is the nature of refactory periods in cardiac muscle as opposed in skeletal muscle? Plateau phase is specific to cardiac muscle. What is the nature of refactory periods in cardiac muscle in as opposed to skeletal muscle, plateau phase is specific to cardiac muscle. What is the nature of refactory periods in cardiac muscle as opposed to skeletal muscle? Plateau phase is specific to cardiac muscle. Cardiac output measures the pumping ability of the heart, the beats per minute of volume of blood. Ejected per beat determines this value. Cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. 
co equals HR times SV. Cardiac output measures the pumping ability of the heart. The beats per minute and the volume of blood ejected per beat determines this value. Cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Co equals HR times SV. Cardiac output measures the pumping ability of the heart. The beats per minute of volume of blood ejected per beat determines this value. Cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Co equals heart rate times stroke volume. Cardiac output is co. Uh, total blood volume averages about 5.5 liters. Each ventricle pumps the same amount of blood. Uh, total blood volume averages about 5.5 liters. Each ventricle pumps about the same amount of blood. Total blood volume averages about 5.5 liters. Each ventricle pumps about the same amount of blood. What affects the volume of blood ejected? Endostolic volume, total peripheral resistance, contractility. What affects stroke volume? Volume of blood ejected. What affects stroke volume? Endo, end diastolic volume, total peripheral resistance, contractility. What affects stroke volume? Volume of blood ejected. What affects stroke volume? Endostolic uh, volume, total peripheral resistance, contractility. What affects EDV? The workload on the heart prior to contraction increased EDV results in increased SV. Venuous return to the heart. What is preload? The workload on the heart prior to contraction SV directly proportional to preload. What influences EDV? The workload on the heart prior to contraction increased EDV results in increased SV. Venuous return to the heart. What influences EDV? The workload on the heart prior to contraction. Increased EDV results in increased SV. Venuous return to the heart. What is preload? The workload on the heart prior to contraction. SV directly proportional to preload. What is preload? The workload on the heart prior to contraction. SV directly proportional to the preload. What is preload? Work on the heart prior to contraction. SV directly proportional to preload. <clears throat> what is TPR? Total peripheral resistance. 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 How is this related to stroke volume? Re resistance to blood flow in arteries. How is this related to stroke volume? Resistance to blood flow in the arteries. How is this re related to stroke volume? Re resistance to blood flow in the arteries. Frank, Starling law of the heart. Intrinsic ability to increase contraction strength and thus stroke volume. Uh, Intrinsic inside equals less strength, so less stroke volume. Extrinsic ability to increase contraction strength and thus stroke volume. And E equals stronger and faster contraction. Uh, extrinsic uh, contractions are external, so you're going to have a larger stroke volume. Uh, Frank Sterling's Law of the Heart. Intrinsic ability to increase contraction strength and thus stroke volume equals uh, less. Intrinsic is the inside uh, ability to contract strengthens and thus stroke volume is less. Extrinsic is the outer ability to increase contraction strength and thus stroke volume is more. Extrinsic equals more. In Intrinsic equals less. Intrinsic equals less. Extrinsic equals more. Intr extrinsic ability to increase contraction strength and thus stroke volume is more. Extrinsic is 
It's an ins external ability to increase contraction. Thus, the stroke volume is more. Fluid equilibrium. Distribution of extracellular fluid between plasma and the space between the cells in is the state of dynamic equilibrium. Distribution of extracellular fluid between plasma and spaces between cells in a state of dynamic equilibrium. Fluid equilibrium. Distribution of extracellular fluid between plasma and spaces between the cells in a state of dynamic equilibrium. Hydrostatic pressure exerted against the inner capillary wall promotes formation of tissue fluid. Fluid equilibrium. Hydrostatic pressure exerted against the inner capillary wall promotes formation of tissue fluid. Hydrostatic pressure exerted against the inner capillary wall promotes formation of tissue fluid. Colloid osmotic pressure. Fluid equilibrium. Colloid osmotic pressure ex uh, exerted by plasma proteins promotes fluid reabsorption into circulatory system. Colloid osmotic pressure exerts by plasma proteins promotes fluid reabsorption into circulatory system. Colloid osmotic pressure exerted by plasma proteins promotes fluid reabsorption into circulatory system. Colloid osmotic pressure exerts by plasma proteins promotes fluid reabsorption into circulatory system. Fluid Equilibrium. Distribution and extracellular fluid between plasma and spaces between the cells is in a state of dynamic equilibrium. Hydrostatic pressure exerted against inner capillary wall promotes formation of tissue fluid. Colloid osmotic pressure exerted by plasma proteins promotes fluid reabsorption into circulatory system.